Chair, and firstly, can I just send our solidarity to, to your members who were caught in the crossfire there uh, on Thursday night and just to uh, wish them uh, well and to thank them for trying to uh, police an, an impossible situation. Um, Commissioner, can I just ask you just about your own statement here before I move into, into other issues? Uh, is it true that a second public order guard unit was stood up at 6 p.m., as reported in the media? Um, because according to your statement here that an initial public order unit was on the scene at 2pm, at 4.30 there were people blocking Lewis's and then at 6pm a second public order unit was stood up. That's a, a media report on that. Is, that. is that accurate? And if it is accurate, why did it take an hour and a half from half four to six o'clock for a second public order unit to be stood up? Uh, that that um, public order unit were coming on duty at 6pm, so that would have been the second unit coming on duty on uh, what was up until 1.30, a normal Thursday. Uh, but beyond that, other public order personnel were being called for, from across DMR and also then uh, into Eastern Region at that particular uh, period of time. So uh, what we have is the two units who would have been on anyway and are supplemented then by DMR personnel and then Eastern Region personnel in terms of public order. Is it not fair to suggest that the original public order unit lost control of the situation by half four and then it took another half an hour, an hour and a half for a second public order unit to arrive on the scene? Uh, no, I don't think they had lost control at half, at half four at all. I think uh, they acted uh, with great fortitude in terms of, at that time, the verbal abuse which was increasing uh, from these individuals. It has, it has to be said, a lot of these individuals engaged in very uh, um, hateful uh, speech uh, towards uh, the Guard of Members. The, the Guard of Members were regarded, in effect, as representatives of the state or the government, and um, we were on the receipt then of, of all of their anger and indeed hatred, but, but they didn't fail. But Commissioner, uh, if a half four people are blocking a Lewis, it's not, not losing control of the situation? Well, uh, as, uh, the Assembly as it, as, it, as it was, was of sufficient numbers that it was blocking that. Now for us then um, to, to move at that stage, uh, we didn't have sufficient guardy actually to move them off, off the So they uh, had lost Lewis. control? Sorry? They had lost control then. Well, I, I'd, say there's, there's, I'd say there's a difference between uh, managing a protest, uh, which at that stage still remains uh, peaceful, though uh, objectionable, uh, and then, uh, in effect, um, uh, taking action as a, police, as a policing service uh, and using our powers in a situation where you actually can't uh, uh, see what the end of that might be. We would, in effect, um, been asking our individual officers to step forward into a situation where they were coming out of Parnell Square uh, into, a, in effect, a huge street, O'Connell Street, with other, other major fair affairs going off, and that would have divided their resources down too far. Can I just ask you about the Guard Inspector Report of April 2019, Public Order Policing? Within that, there are a number of recommendations. It says, the greatest risk as regards public order for Angarda Siakana as an organisation is not from the potential for widespread public disorder, which in an Irish context would be, considered, would be considered relatively low, but rather arises from inconsistent governance and application of Garda policy. An important issue to emerge from the inspection is the absence of a public order strategic threat and risk assessment, an STRA. The absence of an STRA is a significant organisational risk, and the Garda Siakana should urgently develop a formalised public order strategic assessment assessment of threat and risk. Do we have an STRA? Uh, yes, we have, and uh, we have a strategic um, uh, public order meeting uh, every quarter, and, uh, and at that uh, meeting, the strategic threat risk assessment document is, is updated, and uh, we have one for uh, this, this quarter of 2023. Okay. So, the, the report also says the inspector considered that the Garda Chiacona structures and responsibilities for the governance of public order are spread across too many functions. In the inspector's view, a single assistant commissioner should be responsible for leading on public order governance policy and compliance for, and a chief superintendent within operational support services should be responsible for overseeing public order standards, training, capacity and capability to, across the whole country. Is that the scenario as we have it now? Yes, it is. Yes. That's, uh, AC Paula Hillman is the strategic lead, Chief Superintendent Peter Duff is the operational lead. 
Okay. And the last one says, uh, the last one I want to raise with you, the inspector found there's no internal governance group monitoring use of force by Garda members, unlike the other police services visited during the inspection. The inspector recommends that the external oversight of Garda use of force trends should be incorporated into the performance monitoring activities of the policing authority and any sub uh, sub subsequent oversight body. This is a five-year-old report. Why is the policing authority only been asked now to assess the use of force? Uh, well, um, the uh, use of force data that, we've, that we uh, collate, and we've collated that, I think, since uh, mid-2020, has been the subject of publication every month in uh, my report to the Policing Authority. So that information is publicly available on a, on a monthly basis, and I presume is on the Police Authority's website, even as I speak. Uh, and secondly, then, uh, the use of force is monitored then by the Public Orders uh, Working Group on a quarterly basis. Thanks, Chair. Okay.